This is 3B, where you are asked to add data to the database. Well, first of all, we need to create a database. So we'll just put a blank, create a blank desktop database. I'm going to call mine pass first. Find a suitable folder where you're going to save that database and then create it. Okay, so it's come up with table one uh, straight away and we don't actually need that at this stage. So I'm going to close it. Right, and so we've got completely blank database. The reason we don't need it is because if we start with the car table, we can actually import the data. So what we're going to do is go to external data and we're going to import the data from a text file because the uh, car table has been provided as a text file. And if we have a look at that text file and Remember, if we go to our similar but different task and data files, there, okay, is the text file for cars. We've got one for instructors and learners as well. Unfortunately, in the real course, so you have to do a lot of typing, uh, so you can't import all of the tables. Um, you'll be able to import one of them, but not all of them. Do we have a look at car? We've got some information there. We've got its registration number, its make, its model, its registration year, and its transmission. It's what's called a comma separated file because it's got commas separating each field. Okay, so each of these commas separates the fields. In addition to that, any text is in speech marks to identify that it is actually text. So what we're going to do is import that text file. Okay, so here's my import option, not export, but import text file. Now I've got to find that file, okay, mine's on uh, Dropbox, and similar but different tasks, uh, and data files, there it is, and we then go through the process. First of all, it's showing it as delimited, characters such as comma separate each field, that's what we've got. And so it's now worked it out what the fields are, but it's including the first row. So we need to identify that the first row contains field names. There we go, there are now our field names. This is getting good, isn't it? It's quite quick. Uh, we can sort out certain things about data types here, but it's actually easier to do it later on, so we'll ignore that. But what it is asking us is if we want to let access add a primary key. Now you might be thinking, well, registration number, that's uh, unique. But what if a registration number is changed? What if uh, they decide to get private plates for it? Then that means that the primary key changes and that means then the other data within the database has to change. So we always, always use an, a completely unique and separate ID that means nothing. So we'll just leave it there as ID for now. We're gonna change its name later. And it says, what table do we wanna call it? Car, that sounds good. All right, so we'll put that in. Okay, we don't need to save our import steps because we're only doing it once. So here's our car table. It's got all the data in there. Let's have a look at that in design view. So if we go back to our home ribbon and look at design view, we can have a look at some of these fields. First of all, we're gonna make this car ID because there's gonna be other IDs within the database such as instructor ID. Next, we'll have a look at the registration. The moment is 255 characters, that's a lot of wasted space. It's going to take up a lot of extra storage. And also, when we do forms and reports, our data is going to look silly because it's going to have lots of blank space. So if we think about a registration number, I've worked out that a registration number is never more than 10 characters. A make, well that's difficult to judge, but we'll go for 15, same with a model. Should be enough. The registration year is a number. At the moment it's set to a long integer. Well, we can change it to be an integer. So we'll do that because that will take up less space. It's only ever gonna be four digits at the moment. So we'll just put it as an ordinary integer. Our transmission at the moment is set to be short text, but we know that this is either gonna be M for manual, A for automatic. So it only needs to have one character. It's not Boolean. B 
because although it's M for manual, A for automatic, and there are only two options, it's not yes or no. Boolean can either be yes, no, or true, false, or on, off. That's the only options. Okay, so that is now the car table completed. So if we save that, it's going to tell us some data is going to be lost. That's okay. That's all the blank spaces. We'll just have a look at it. All our data is still there, okay? But we're not using up lots of extra blank space anymore. So that's the car table done. The next video, we'll look at the learner table.